Well, hello folks. Yes, I'm sitting here talking to you in the dark. For your own benefit. <laughs> well, partly. Perhaps my benefit too. Or perhaps just because. You know, this time of year it gets dark early and. With the weather sometimes, I just like to be with that a bit and sort of rest my eyes even before I get tired. Of course, sometimes I do other things and read. But anyway, there's been some things here that I'm, I'm trying to put together and see how these things relate. And fit together. One thing which I really can't stand is how individualized and compartmentalized people have become such that if you were to look at their mind you wouldn't find a tapestry. You'd be hard to put to find a tapestry anywhere. You wouldn't find a form, a statue, a sonnet, or a song. What you find is a tacky collection of five or six different styles thrown here with cheap materials and Lacking any type of form or presentation. And I'll just go on to an example to give you a more precise uh, idea of what I'm talking about. I think a lot of it is simply social media. I've been off of it. I wasn't on it too much until recent years. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there can relate to that statement that, that resisted for a while the flood. Uh, you know, before their neurons got ripped apart and, and the dopamine was released and uh, the uh, reward centers enlarged. You know, and I've been without it even during that time. I had breaks of, of months sometimes. You know, so I'm kind of an analyzing. My, my own mind I'm going over this. I'm not saying that I'm some type of person who can be unafflicted by these things. I just think it's, to a large degree, neuroscience and the brain, chemistry. I mean, you can be aware of that and keep it in check, or you can be a, you know, a, subconscious uh, or completely robotic person swept away by those currents. Well, the compartmentalization I, I think in particular is, has been weaponized towards certain political uh, ends. Say, I have been reevaluating my relationship with the Creator, the Heavenly Father, as I've been forced through um, the acknowledgement that the earth itself is a creation because this old story about uh, biblical Big Bang and gravity and these types of things are they're really quite unsubstantiated when you dig into them, mm -hmm. along with the shape of the earth and everything that entails. You see, so I've always had certain feelings in my bones, but it's never quite been something that made me want to 
for example, and for a literal demonstration, become a Catholic. I decide not to get confirmed, though I was raised. Um, because I've always seen different sides of things and inconsistencies and and uh, the lack of integrity in uh, certain uh, religions. You know, so at first, I was exploring what you may come across more often than now, when you're introduced into the flat or the scene, at least uh, that available to the Western servers, if you will. Um, I see a lot from the United States and the UK and uh, some other parts of Europe, but mostly those two. And that's sort of a older, more traditional Old Testament type of a thinking, where you look into the Torah and, well, essentially you have a bunch of uh, European people being uh, more strict about that stuff than the, <laughs> the people who wrote it, in my opinion, which are Middle Eastern. So it doesn't quite make much sense to me, I mean, a blend of Middle Eastern other things, a little European, and, well, Asian, and, uh, you know, and then once you get into that, there's this dichotomy, if you will, within that little sect, which is, you know, there are also the flat earthers who are kind of more into the New Testament side of things, and the New Covenant. You know, so I spent some time evaluating those things, and by time, I mean, uh, probably anywhere from four to six or more months, where it was, if not a primary focus all the time, definitely for a lot of that time, where I'd be going over different things and getting to the Gnostics and really just, you know, even actually sitting down and looking through all the Old Testament and having the Strong's Concordance and things like that. And looking at the different Hebrew words and finding odd connections and little things in there that someone who has other knowledge might find in whatever particular field they're interested in because there's a lot of things in that book, I must say. You know, but then I also had experiences and Some of them were, well, I'm not going to talk about those, I guess. Maybe if I was talking to you in person, I might, but uh, this isn't the place or, or the time. But either way, so I kind of was in that and fell out of it, really, through, through more critical thought, if you will. Yes, there's all kinds of different brands of that, you know, the Lost Tribes, and maybe those are American people too, and uh, the whole, uh, the real Jews are the Africans, and all the biblical places are in Africa, and there's all kinds of different things you hear when you get into that, and different interpretations, and different camps, if you will, that people like to set up in their mind, but that's mostly what I'm saying, is these things exist mostly in the mind. It's tough to take a book like that and reduce it to much of anything unless you're reducing the cash to monodomic gold or something like that. I mean, that might be reproducible. Or if you're trying to get light water from heavy water by uh, using certain magnets to collect elements and things like that, you might be able to change density through a rather impure method, a simple method of magnets being placed around certain pipes and sort of U configuration like a the bottom of your sink or your toilet, well not your toilet, that's a bad example, but your sink to catch, you know, the stuff that doesn't quite, you don't want to go down further. Um, same basic idea. And, uh, things like that, you know, but, uh, overall I just saw that this, this whole idea of Christianity is, is simply playing into the hands of uh, 
globalist ultimately and you know uh, love your enemy and things like this is a, is a terrible message for people under attack you know so I can't uh, I can't stand with something that I know is ultimately detrimental and it's really simple as that and trying to thin anybody out there but that's just how I come to think and you know again to go on about the nuances I've been talking for quite a while so let's just say I've drifted more into a, a pagan idea of things where you're kind of more looking for natural principles in nature and then basing your ideas off of that rather than looking for them in the text or in the belief system per se and, you know i'm just more of a scientific minded guy that appeals to me a little bit more and, well it just seems less artificial and more foolproof more more along the lines you can see of direct realism Though I understand that's not quite something that's mentioned with the uh, God and uh, beliefs too often. So that's my line of development. Though throughout that has been this way and that, and I've gone through my stages of uh, revulsion against all these pagan holidays and. You know, there's lots of kicks you can get, you know, kickbacks and, and little drifts and, and uh, things that build up inside of you when you have a conviction, when you come across knowledges and things you want to reject and push against and shove against. And uh, it can it can imply or um, you can implement quite a, a great deal of energy when you're your uh, first harness and this conviction but the problem is it's just going in which direction and that's more determined by these uh, search engines and and your own perspective and bias which which is gonna lead you to different things because you know let's face it it's just not simply as pleasurable to watch something uh, when it's a person talking about the, the opposite of what you think or a different perspective or somewhere in the middle It's just gray and boring, you know, so this is the interface. I'm talking about It's It's already almost there on a sort of a proto spiritual level where we're being designed You know by our own uh, Manipulation we know how our mind is we let it run free and follow its interests. It's an ideal environment It's just fine but we're not in an ideal environment, and these things can be shaped. Our interests, our beliefs, our pathways of research, and ultimately the friends we end up having on Facebook, and the ones that are suggested to us, and, and so on it goes. So here I was looking at two of my friends on Facebook to finally get to that point. Pardon me. And, uh, you know, there's this old thing nowadays I see about... Uh, Certain people find an identity in rejecting cultural Marxism and feminism and this type of thing, but then they get so gung ho about the next thing that to me is just an issue of uh, the ego trying to compensate for for sort of an overcritical and attacking nature. Um, that is, you realize how wrong you are, and then you want to be so damn right that you get super convicted and. Uh, to me, the people who are right and really think they're right and can say it with confidence are the people who've been right many, many times and the people who have done something many times and have experience and uh, uh, time, this type of thing, you know what I mean? You get to be a good judge of things. All right, and then on the other hand, you don't really see many pagans and things like that. They kind of keep to themselves, you know? I don't see any pagan people who are... Uh, bashing on Christianity. I haven't actually ever come across that, you know, not explicitly. I know people who who say certain things like, you know, not insulting the people, but Christianity has made them, you know, like, domicile or 
or that type of thing, you know, weak, or it makes them, like, attached to, uh, uh, being a poor spirit, in a way, and, and, uh, rejection of beauty and things like this, and I can relate to a lot of that, but that's not the same as, as these other Christian folk who want to say that paganism is pure evil, and it's, it's, uh, the New World Order, uh, you know, uh, that it's, um, coming in with uh, Satan and all these things, and, uh, you know, so what I'm seeing is that people are being charged up like little batteries. They've sort of misinformation where they have a f sort of a, you're using the power of the ego and the, 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 the drive and the partial ability and sometimes complete ability of the human to understand the situation, put it in the context, you know, make an environment around themselves with their brain and then implement some type of action, opinion, or uh, communication, uh, data transfer, if you will, in more abstract terms. And from cell to cell, you have these charges going on. And what it ultimately amounts to at this time what the battery is that's being composed of all these cells is sort of a, a self-hating uh, feedback loop and it, it kind of spikes up and sometimes it goes over to <laughs> to certain places in the Middle East and comes back down and, and bites itself again in the butt and uh, all kinds of shocks and electrical things go on during that process I and mean, it does other things too you know, but that's one of them, and, you know, what I'm getting at is, here you have two European people fighting each other, based on their views on something which is, one, a private matter, and two, unprovable either way. You know, um, there's some people who have a conception of God as simply an explanation of things they can't explain. And they think that's God, you know, and then that's that, that becomes a something. And then there's people who say, well, no, I doubt that God is just some magical dude who fills in everything and makes things make sense. But the fact that everything's so intricate and there are these boundaries, if you will, and creations and, and uh, intelligences which are evident, principles and things like that, then there must be a creator behind that. And, you know, those distinctions I I find, you know, I don't find people explicitly talking about that, but to me that's a distinction between a more naturalistic pagan type of idea where it's the principle and it's the divine intelligence behind things. And, and maybe that is an old father or, or things like that. You know, versus just this sort of... Uh, you know, um, explanation, you know, is, is, is like object versus observation, <laughs> you know, does the mind come up with an object, or does the mind look carefully and observe and try to find things out about that object, and, you know, not to get lost in all that sort of, uh, loop to do, hot wheel tracks going on in the mind, <laughs> loop de loops but, uh, you know, so that's one, one example of this sort of compartmentalization of the mind that's, that's really just divorcing one self from the other when they're right next to each other in the same hand, the same battery, which can be feeling some type of national greatness, or at least, uh, well-being be between people and goodwill, um, where it's applicable and useful. I mean, so another example, just to be real quick about this, another example is is when you have um, people arguing about abortion. And my views about abortion are quite, I would say. I would say nothing, because I'm not going to tell you what to think about me. That's your business. 
But there's people, of course, who are adamantly against it. And how it's completely evil and it's murder. And there's people who also have an idea that it's a choice, a personal choice, on one real line with a woman. And I can't quite agree with any of these, or any of those, uh, stances. For on the one hand, you simply can't prove that there is a soul attached to a fetus, and when would you determine such an age? And Vedic cultures, it says 40 days, but is that just because past that you're not going to have too much of a chance to abort? You know, I don't know why the sages said that. And I don't know if they really even did. That's just a consensus in the more modern uh, guru circles as far as I've been exposed to them when I was into the Eastern philosophy and went to an ashram. You know. Um, and also on that perspective of it being immoral, I'm left with many questions about that. But those will develop naturally when we look at the other hand. For over there, you see it being the personal choice of a woman, and you know, it's not her choice to decide not to have a kid once she decided to have a kid. You can't eat a cake and then later say, I'm choosing to cut off my fat. I mean, you can do that. But the point is, when you ate that cake, you decided to have the possibility of getting fat. Now, it's very, very same with, uh, with having intercourse, where the decision to become pregnant or not is before you engage in intercourse. That's when the woman makes the choice. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like get real with yourself there. Take a step back. You know, and the same thing goes for the man. Like, if he doesn't want to be a father, he doesn't need to be uh, doing that. And that, that's more of my stance. It's like a, it's more about how people relate to each other. It's how you have... A relationship is defined by a purpose and a function and a stability and a longevity to have children. Because otherwise, what are you even doing together? You're passing your time or something like that while your people die out. That's what I see, you know. Now, I know there's certain trines and discoveries and things like that. Mostly because you've been hoodwinked and bamboozled by... By a sick society and a, a very lobbied and foreign society, I might add. You know, so I understand there's some type of struggle there and it's real. Because of this, you might need to have a bit of a learning curve, but I think that's mostly manufactured. You know. So, the idea of consent to become pregnant, to me, is just, you know... Before you have the act, that is when the disclaimer comes up. You know, I think it's implicitly understood. <laughs> um, you know, but then on the other hand, if you were to take a moral stance and just completely get rid of all the abortions, you would have to ask yourself, well, what about the death that would be caused by having certain people be born. And I don't mean in some movie sense of like, uh, butterfly effect, like this happens, that leads to that, whatever. Because sure, maybe, but, you know, I'm not going to be here contemplating destiny right now at the moment. I'm more looking at what's actually happening, um, regardless of the intricate nature of causality, um, which I'm not disinterested in. But just to stay on point, and you must ask yourself, okay, who are the people who are most likely to get an abortion? Those who are thinking, well, I'm not prepared to be a mother. 
I'm not going to be well supported so my kid might not have what it needs. You know? And who are the people likely to not get an abortion? You know, I'm playing extremes here. But a lot of this happens. You know, I'll get more money if I have another kid. Oh, my insurance might go out. You know, I hear Muslims saying this. So I need to have another kid so I can still go to the dentist for free. And, uh... And if you look at the demographics of those people, we'll, we'll get there in a second. We're just looking at those characteristics, you know. Whether or not the first type of people are um, prepared or not, they're thinking about being prepared. You know, and it's like, <laughs> a lot of times people don't pack their bag until they're on a plane to China, you know what I mean? You're not going to just pack your bag just in case you're going to China. You're packing your bag when you're going to China. <laughs> You know what I mean? And these people are thinking about what their kid needs. Maybe they don't have everything right there and how they want it. But then they're thinking about it. And that leads to action and reality. And that's what you're looking for. Whereas on the other hand, it's people looking for something from having a kid. Not for their kid. You know, so that's one thing. Is dysgenic. It's inherently dysgenic. However, that's just looking at it from a perspective of nurturing. But there's another way to be looking at it. There's many ways, but another way is to consider demographics and population. And the people who get the most abortions are African American women in the US. They're also having more kids despite that. So if you think that you should not have any, uh, any uh, abortion at all, what you're really facilitating is that white people are gonna be bred out sooner. You know, it, it's already a matter of time and simple mathematics. You know, it's just a numbers game. It's way much more than that. Way more than that. But, that is a statement which has a direct mathematical analog, which is applicable to reality, that is, is already being mapped out, and is already being corresponded to predictions. So it's an appropriate application of a, an abstract science, or language. So then, are you, by being a religious Christian, Doing something which would be, <laughs> which would please it, uh, the Jewish God of Jehovah more than it would Jesus Christ. You know, does that align more with globalist propaganda, open borders, and a lack of any type of uh, national civic pride or order <laughs> infrastructure? Uh, as it kind of boils down to, uh, not so romantic to say that, but heck. A bridge is something not to be taken for granted. And, uh, so there's an angle, you know, you have to think about that. You know, but point being, these two people, and these people I hear talking about these things, are usually both Europeans, and they're getting all catty about things when they're really, uh, pretty, pretty much genetically sisters or cousins. You know, so those are just two examples of how the mind is compartmentalized by social media and it kind of leads on to a third thing and that is the forces which are controlling the selection of mates and what one looks for in a partner and 
ultimately, which genes get passed on. There's people out there who are writing books. J.F., if you guys know him. Jean-Francois. He's a public spaceman, and I haven't read his book. I shouldn't call him a spaceman, it might confuse you. His channel is called The Public Space, and he has a lot of good content on there. He's also an evolutionist, and, you know, you can learn a lot from evolution. I don't buy creation, but, you know, the mechanisms of evolution work, but I don't know why they're called mechanisms of evolution. It should be more like uh, organism uh, interaction or something like that, like group dynamics of cells or, or cultures. or You know, maybe if I had some time, I could come up with a better... Uh, uh, pin a better name or something like that, but evolution is an appropriate name because because you can study you know selection and K versus R and and uh, patterns and and genealogies and uh, you know how these things interact and affect each other. You can do all that with the origin being from uh, lifeless matter or being from uh, uh, creation, a god, a living god. You know? So, I still listen to some things which are evolutionary based. Because, like I said, it don't matter. You can learn a lot. It's how people interact. You know? They just use that term and theory to... You know, they, they use what can be verified and evident and people take it's true and that makes sense. And then they slap this story on it and then slather it down the line... And then you, you got the whole picture, the, the evolution down the alley, you know. Um, but the the problem with this perspective here about you know forces which are controlling our mate selection being regulated to genetic factors and regulated to something like artificial intelligence and gene selection which is kind of an extension of evolutionary theory that natural selection starts to become um, programmable or even artificially intelligent selection and then from there you can open up a can of worms or you can become gods or you can do all kinds of fanciful things which I don't know if it can happen but it very well might because you know the past was quite a lively time and I think some of these mythologies might have basis in reality when you're talking about dragons and giants and super soldiers and all this other type of stuff who knows half goats half men and centaurs and, and what you have you medusas and things like that you know so it might become a more lively time and that can of arms is open However, we are at this stage where our selection is already being programmed. There's already an analog going on behind this. You know, I shouldn't say analog, because analog to me is like the more natural computation in nature. But there's, there's already something going on here that's quite unnatural. And the, 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 the very forces which are starting to program uh, the algorithms and which hold the the uh, the technology and fund the 5G and and the uh, YouTube and the the series and all these things and looking at artificial intelligence and servers and research and then voice tapping everyone and running all these tests and trying to figure out the world. Um, these people, <laughs> might as well call them suckers. Uh, be a bit. Uh, how can I say it? Uh, not explicit um a bit comedic these these suckers are going to and are already shaping how how we um relate to human beings and you know there's an interesting video i saw that was like looking at divorce rates Comparing it to movies that came out with divorces in them and how they, like, they made it seem like a big cool thing in a way. Like the kids weren't messed up and blah 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 and it like helped the people develop and stuff like that. Like positive divorce movies. You know, to the extent that they could be positive in that day, you know, because you're always pushing the envelope when you start these things. Um, 
And then bam, the divorce rates go up. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, this intelligence thing is already happening. How do you, like, distract people from something going on? You, one way is you tell them it's going to happen in the future, and then they get all calculated and thinking about that, and, oh, we got to prevent this and everything. Also, they go straight thing with with a society collapse. And, like, I've been talking lately about nations going bye-bye and European people going extinct and things like that. But, you know, there's some weird evidence out there. And who's to say that? You know, two, three hundred years ago, that didn't already happen. We're just like the remnant guys who happened to, to make it through. And a wave two is coming to scroungers again. You know, <laughs> I can't say. But this, this technological thing, it goes to the very core of existence to me. You know, because there's parts of this, this world which are programmable. There's, there's things that go on which your brain is simply hardwired to pick up on. If you don't have the sort of uh, awareness to look inside your own mind and figure out what neurological connections are happening and almost feel them in a way and, and go into more depth and understand your subconscious and develop a relationship with it, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in the prairie or if you're in the house or if you're, if you're in Congress somewhere or... You know what I mean? You're in your pajamas on the couch. You're going to be fooled one way or the other about things. You know, so... It's this very force of... Non-living intelligence. Demons. I'm talking about calculation power. That's what that term used to mean. And information exchange very fast. Maybe something like the internet. You know, is this type of thing developing people, changing the social situations, developing an infrastructure, having sort of a host parasitic person who maybe because of the brain structure or the DNA or something has a more um, susceptibility to this type of uh, possession. And then they're going to start changing the face of society to the extent that eventually these sort of uh, archaic technologies die down and go away because god I'm really not against the internet as a thing in itself but the way technology has been uh, so called blossoming is very destructive you know there's a better way to be doing things and I know that because I can just feel the phone and my hands burn there's people out there ah, you know what I'm talking about it messes with your gut, it messes with your, your sensations, with your mind. You know, but, uh, the same force in shaping society, shaping the infrastructure, perhaps even how things look, as crazy as that sounds. Getting into the headspace eventually, the institutions, the schools, the movies. And then having things like the stupid smartphone, which start to have a mind of their own, apparently. But what if that mind isn't a product of artificial intelligence? What if that's just the original non-living intelligence? which has been working against the true living spirit of mankind from the Heavenly Father or the God above or however you want to say. Now it just has little guns in people's pockets firing away at them all day. You know, to the point... See, this concern about artificial intelligence and evolution is, is gene selection. That there might be companies rely on this that might start getting uh, unbiased over time and centuries and things like that so that they, uh, the computers just make everyone domicile and submissive and things like that, you know. But to me... The effort doesn't look so much like life farming from unconscious things, because, prove me wrong, that's never been a verified or reproduced ever. There's no evidence that 
A non-living has ever made a living thing. Ever. Viva ex vivo. Life from life. This is the verifiable truth. As best we know it. Which is why the evolution twist on this is one thing I don't agree with. It's what I don't agree with for other reasons as well. Because it's that subtle twist which says that the threat might be from artificial intelligence. But I'm thinking the threat already exists. It might get stronger and it might get a new nickname and something to excuse it or disguise. Oh, that's artificial intelligence doing that. I'm not saying you can't make awesome algorithms and program things. But that's the extent of artificial intelligence if you look into it today. You have programs, algorithms, and they run. They run quite good for a certain while. But then the programmer has to come and reset them again. They haven't found a programmer, an artificial programmer, to program the program. That's what they need to do somehow or another. Which probably wouldn't be that tough. It just have to be a separate system interacting with it. But heck, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, as, you, as you may hear, I'm just a guy in a shipping yard right now. <laughs> There's commotion going around out there. Well, anyway, to me, what it appears to be is something that's desperately trying to figure out what life is because it doesn't have life and it can't understand life and it never will because it's not living. And you have to be living to understand life. And it wants to figure out the genes related to that thing so it can exterminate them. Get rid of the creativity in the world. Get rid of the light. Get rid of the joy. Make all eyes go dim. And that's what I see. You know, it's, it's something that ties together the forces you see all around. The forces ripping apart the families and tearing apart friendships, polarizing people by politics, but also on Facebook by religion and everything else, and training the, the mind to be <laughs> to be something like a machine which follows algorithms, and you're, you're training your neural networks to work like uh, these, these technical crooks want them to. All because being online is pleasurable and addictive, and it is. Oh, it definitely is. To a degree. If your life lacks the true sap of living things, wiretapped, well, maybe we're. Tap like a maple tree is tapped just as well, and we're bleeding out our sides. Yeah, and what's getting that sweetness? Well, anyway, I think that's as far as I want to take it right now. I hope that. You can understand where I'm coming from a little bit, how there's an interface between the technological and the biological already, and that the forces at play may be nothing new, and we're just confused, and, and thinking that these empirical-based technological world strictly operating by, uh, <laughs> you know, mechanical pathways is... Is all there is, and the state of knowing we have is so great. Instead of perhaps considering it, these forces may be no different than the forces that the ancients encountered. Maybe they weren't off their... Off their... Uh, trying to combine two phrases in my head. 
on their high horses and off their rockers. Rocking off their high horses. <laughs> like a rocking chair horse. How about that? Rocking off their horsey high horses. Horsey high chairs. Rocking off their horsey high chairs. <laughs> well. Things to think about. Hope you have a good one. Bye.